All right, welcome back, guys, to the Squid Talk Podcast. I'm your host, Lucas Pactor. I'll first give, well, it's actually been a bit since we did the last one. I was trying to, trying to get the right setup. I didn't want to do it in, like, a nasty area with a bad background, bad mic. So happy to be here today. We're on uh, Melrose at Melrose Podcast, so thank you for having us. I'm with Marshall Cruz and Joey Forslund. I said that right, right? Yeah. Your last name? There you go. So quick introduction to the podcast. If you're new here, this podcast is called Squid Talk. The reason it's called Squid Talk is because squid is an insult. It means like pussy, spineless, weak, um, pretty much like everything that I am. And so I like to have on guests that kind of embody the opposite of that. Studs, anyone who's young and ambitious and killing it in some sort of aspect. Past guys we've had are finance guys, entrepreneurs. We have some fitness guys and video guys now. So uh, I'll hand it over to Marshall first to introduce himself. But thank you guys for joining us today. Uh, what's up, guys? Sorry, I'm adjust the shit. He said uh, a fist away from the mic, so. Um, all right, so, which camera am I looking at? Any of the cameras? All right, I'm just going to do my thing. So I've been on a couple podcasts, um, but in general, I'm not, like, super experienced on this. But um, I do have a lot of experience in front of a camera. Uh, my name is Marshall Cruz. I'm 21 years old. Uh, I've lived in L.A. for, like, I don't even know, five, six months now. Um, I have been, I guess, a content creator now, creative, whatever you want to call it, for just under three years, I believe. Um, I started a while back, man, when I was, uh, whenever I was like 17, 18, um, getting into the gym. I was, uh, I was in college. I went to college at 16, um, where I'm from. You can kind of, uh, you went to college at 16. Yeah. So like where I'm from. Um, I'm from Florida, right? So you can kind of, if you score high enough on tests, you can like just skip the last two years of high school and just go straight to college, um, which is dope because mm. it's like, it's free. You know what I mean? It's free unless you're, until you, until you, you know, you turn 18 or whatever you graduate, it's free. So um, I was like, well, shit, you know, this will allow me to get out of my house. Um, I lived in a very toxic um, environment in my house at the time uh, with, you know, my mom, my family and stuff. It was just like, a, it was just a, it was a mess. So, um, mm -hmm. and I was homeschooled up until that point. So I was kind of just, uh, there um, is. yeah. So like, so you know, whenever, weirdo. Oh, I was wow. a weirdo. I was, I was definitely the kid with the, uh, with the gun in his backpack for sure. <laughs> um, people had no. you on your good side, huh? Yeah, no, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not even, I'm not even joking. No, you had some I was, issues? Uh, I had some issues, some okay. very, some, some anger issues. I had, um, this thing called reactive attachment disorder as a kid. So basically it's just like fucks up your ability to be able to bond with any human being, um, specifically a maternal or paternal figure. Mm -hmm. Um, and basically, um, yeah, no, I won't go too into detail, um, down the rabbit hole of like childhood, all that shit. But basically, um, it was a mess. One of these days I'll sit down with you and we'll, you know, we'll hash it out. It's a, it's a lot, but, um, yeah, basically I, you know, lived under a rock to a very specific, like, you know, when I say I lived under a rock, like people like to use that expression as like, Oh, like he doesn't know what's going on. I no, I didn't have internet access until I was like 17 and I went to college. Like wow. I did not have a phone. Um, for the first year I was driving, I didn't have like, like I, I would go to school to the college, like to the university to like get on the internet. Like, and that was I, because your parents were like, you're not allowed to. Yeah. Why do you think, I want to give Joey a chance to introduce himself too, but oh, last yeah. question before we go over, why do you think your parents wanted to shield you? Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and stay, say before anything, my parents definitely did have good intentions. Mm -hmm. um, my parents just were, my, mo my mom specifically, um, just not like super... I don't know. Their execution was off. That's mm -hmm. that's that's what that's all I'll say. I'll say their their intentions were good. Their execution was poor, um, and the intentions were to I guess yeah help shield me I guess from the world, mm -hmm. um, and it ended up I, I ended up fine you know obviously yeah. but it did end up I guess leaving me with little preparation for living in the world you know being you know an adult being an independent um that kind of thing so yeah but yeah basically went to college night to er, went to college 16 dropped out of college fucking my senior year so that's like 20 i was like 19 20 something like that to pursue content creation full-time um i knew i was going to be a business 
entrepreneur, creator, whatever. Um, I knew that from the time I was in high school. I The first time I got my hands on the internet, I uh, started drop shipping immediately. I literally figured out what the internet was and figured out how to make money very quickly because, bro, money grows on trees, man. Yeah. We print, well, like money, yeah. money, you can print money, dude. Like, yeah. Money if you know what you're doing, if you, if you could just be able to learn a little bit and, and look in areas that people aren't looking at totally. Yeah. But, um, so you... Did you know Joey before or after you graduated college? So I actually, um, I never graduated. Let's, okay, yeah, that's right. I, I, I did. Out. I yeah, dropped right. out my senior year, so I technically graduated with my associates or whatever AA. Mm -hmm. um, so I actually met Joey about what was it seven eight months ago? Yeah, seven eight months. I was so. still in college at the time. Yeah, and then so I was here in LA. Or, oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, because you have so, you, you've been in LA for a while. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So uh, my story has been a little bit easier. Uh, mm -hmm. I grew up with good supportive. Uh, parents, good supportive family, good brother. Um, but I've been in the content creation space for about realistically, like, yeah, three, four years. Um, I, I'm typically the one behind the scenes on the cameras and stuff, but um, blessed enough to step in front of the camera today. But um, yeah, I grew up in a great family. Uh, I, I grew up in like a very uh, normal family, very mm -hmm. middle class, this, that. Um, and Everything was kind of like set in stone, what would and wouldn't happen for my life. I was also homeschooled all the way up until my sophomore year of high school. Wow. Yeah, funny. So I was homeschooled all the way from uh, second grade through sophomore year of high school. And the only reason I went to high school was because I found a loophole through my parents to get there because of sports. That's the okay. only reason. And they were they were already mad enough about that. So your parents wanted to like shield you in a way as to well. To some degree, not and not enough like on, on a toxic level like Marshall, yeah, yeah. but it was more of like a uh, they believed that the education system was more beneficial uh, from like a homeschool standpoint uh -huh. than like a public school standpoint. Gotcha. So it well, was well, less yeah. toxic. But. I would agree that the, I think the education system is extremely um, yeah. incompetent, but I think the social skills you get from public school yeah. or or just school in general are what matters yeah i also think like sports like like you kind of touched on sports are really important growing up and like being able to socialize but that's interesting because you guys are very chill normal sim actually more so than normal most m normal people you know are kind of weird in my opinion yeah. um yeah. but you guys are cool you guys are cool to hang out with so i'm surprised that you know Turned coming from yeah. homeschool backgrounds um you guys have been able to like adapt so quickly and kind of you know not just become more normal, but like be guys that don't care about what others think that are trying to be in the spotlight more often than others. What do you guys think? I guess we'll start with you, Marshall. What do you think caused that change? And like, was that, was that intimidating or was it pretty much just like, this is all new to me. So might as well like fully deep in the, fully jump in the deep end as opposed to like trying to walk out there slowly. Yeah. So, um, I would say that, any amount of growth made by a human, whether that's physically, mentally, um, cognitively, whatever it is, uh, is always caused by some catalyst event um, of d that involves discomfort. So um, any change that we experience as humans is caused by some form of discomfort or like, I don't like what I'm doing right now who I am right now, the situation I'm in right now. So I need to do something to make it different. And mm -hmm. at, growing up, I hated my, I guess, my life circumstances. I hated my environment. Um, I didn't hate my family, um, but I did hate the environment that parts of my family created for me. And so I guess, um, and I, I also hated the, the dynamic between a lot of the individuals in my family. Um, and I knew that obviously I, d I didn't want that forever, you know, and as soon as a little bit of independence was introduced to me, a little bit of freedom, um, I knew that I had to kind of like make some kind of change, some mm -hmm. kind of change to um, offer, you know, a catalyst to grow, to be different, to, you know, find um, those skills and those life experiences that I was missing from my childhood and, you know, growing up and stuff. So um, I guess for me, uh, whenever I was, you know, kind of thrown out into the world, whenever I went to college um, at 16, I, you know, whenever you go to college as a 16 year old kid, you're like, you know, considered a freshman or whatever, mm -hmm. and you are treated as an adult, right? So nobody there knew that I was 16 until, you know, I said like, hey, I'm 16, right? So yeah. everybody treats you as an adult. Everybody treats you as an independent. I bet you probably hid that too, right? Um, actually, did you tell people? I did. I, I would tell people when they asked me. Really? You know what okay. I mean? Um, well, yeah. I mean, not lie, but like, 
Yeah, no, no, I, no. I, I, I mean, I personally would run around go out of your way and say it. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, I didn't go out of my way to say it. Um, just because I didn't go out of my way to say much of anything. Yeah. Um, for a while, I was kind of just like, like I said, I was a kid with the gun in my backpack, you know, in a, uh, in, a, in, a, in a, not in a weird way, but um, <laughs> people, people were no, nah, people were like scared of me as a kid. Yeah. Uh, because were you just kind of like that quiet guy, and you just kind of looked around and like kind of gave people like an evil eye when they fucked with eye. you, and you're just like, uh, don't no. push me too far. I was uh I was just kind of like I was a very I was a very observant kid because I was taught growing up that um you know to listen rather than speak okay. um because like it wasn't my place to speak I'm a kid like mm-hmm. you know what I mean who am I to say some shit yeah. you know what I mean like I just need to shut the fuck up and like listen to whatever you know the authority told me um which well, is what what, is, what does that authority know? think of you now or how how involved how involved are your parents how much do they know how updated are they with like everything in your life right now do you talk to them very much um, still so um i guess i'll briefly go over this uh just because i don't want to you know get into dude i'm not gonna lie my life story my family situation it is a fucking rabbit hole but well, that's, um, what, we're, that's yeah. what we're trying to get into right so now. that's what we're trying to learn uh about. If, if we're just gonna like you know go there um i my mom passed whenever i was 17 which i would I would, oh, I would, I yeah. would, uh, I would, you know, say it was a very, you know, that was a very ca- big catalyst for change, um, mm-hmm. in my life and, you know, like growing up and stuff. So, um, you know, it was a very por- important part of my character development, a canon event, if you mm-hmm. want. Well, I've never even seen the movie of just everybody on TikTok say canon event. So, whatever. yeah, I don't know what that's from either. I've been seeing that. It's from the Spider Man movie. movie. Oh, really? I yeah. think you have multiple canon events personally. Yeah, well, that was for sure my biggest one. Okay. So, um, it was a pretty traumatic experience, and I won't go into detail um, unless you guys just want me to go into detail. But um, basically, so yeah, no, um, I, uh, my birth mother, um, she died whenever I was five. For, uh, due to uh, some due to skin cancer um, then I was adopted and then my you know adopted mother died when I was 17 so mm-hmm. my father's still in the picture um, my dad um, he is a he's a Christian counselor actually so um, and he um, honestly like I am slowly starting to form a decent relationship with my dad again um, I talked I've been talking to him a little bit here recently since December um, is when I've been talking to him again but there was a, a long period of time maybe a year two years where I really just didn't speak to him um, I was from the time I basically turned 18 till the time I was like 20 almost 21 um, I just really just didn't really have any kind of contact there was a lot of a lot of a uh, <sighs> There was a lot animosity. of conflict, animosity, anger. Gr- uh, I wouldn't say grudge because I wasn't really worried about it. Um, but it, it just like there was a lot of animosity between us. So um, there was very little contact. Um, I had contact with the rest of my family, fortunately. Um, and I am very grateful to have very recently done that. Been able to, you know, reconnect a little bit with my dad and, you know, my family and stuff. Um, but I would say that... Uh, yeah, they're very well. They're very much aware of what I do, um, of everything I do. I sound like a fucking porn star right now. My well, family, I mean, you're, my you're family is very spot. aware. I had to have that conversation with my family. That was I had a couple um, bad conversations, even though you know, to our to our eyes, it's like, dude, we're just trying to like make it. We're just trying to put ourselves out there and take risks and yeah. hurt ourselves so that we can force ourselves to get back up and learn and get better. And your parents, natural, kind of like you touched on earlier sure your parents feel the same way yeah. your parents naturally want to protect you like they don't yeah. want you to take the risky path they don't want you to drop out right that's probably yeah. the last thing they want you to do yeah. um and that's just because they want you to be safe like they don't want to put their kid in harm's way but i think you know even though parents almost all the time have the best intentions i think they and i want to hear you guys opinion on this um they while they might have the best intentions, they don't always have the right answers, and it's because they've already experienced stuff, so they already know how things go. Kids need to learn that on their own. Like I said, they need to fall and learn how to get back up, not be you know mm-hmm. lifted up by their parents, but they actually have to figure out how to walk, figure out how to run in order to get better and continue to grow. Um, and so I think a lot of parents, when they hold their kids in and shield them, that word again, it like prevents growth. But right. the second one, you're allowed to fully do whatever you want, while you might make some big mistakes and get in trouble and get hurt, like yeah. that's when you grow the most. So yeah. that kind of leads me to my next question, though. 
what was uh what was your Canada event Joey because like like you said you kind of had a pretty typical safe I would say yeah, uh, right lifestyle out. growing up yeah um and then I'm, I'm sure your parents weren't too thrilled about yeah. you dropping out right it I know was you mentioned uh, that we talked. well I mean I've played I played baseball all the way from when I was like three years old all the way till my sophomore year of college and so when I kind of like met Marshall like I didn't adapt this mentality till as of recently with like seeking discomfort and always like being able to put myself in the most uncomfortable situation to grow and being able to put myself in a position to fail so that I can get back up. I haven't always thought like that. I've always, yeah, I've been taught like to go the safe route, go to college, mm -hmm. go get possibly a desk job, this, that. Um, but at the same time, my parents have always been very supportive of like my decisions and, uh, but also very weary. And like you're talking about, they're very just sketched for for doing different things you know what I mean so um, when I pitched them the idea of dropping out of school it was kind of a shock to them and it was kind of like a, a like why like why would you do that because like I was why like, you're on yeah. such a good path yeah, yeah your I, life it, is going so good right now yeah why would but you they're, do that? they're looking from the outside yeah. in and uh, they don't see like what's going on with my life because I was hanging around with some some losers like mm -hmm. the guys in college that I went to were like they had no sense of direction with their lives they had I w they they would be taking majors that they had no idea even what would like kind of jobs that they would go into uh a lot of them would just party daily party every you know weekend this that whatever and i would find myself becoming very introverted at that point i'd find myself working at my desk i'd find myself not fitting into a specific group it's not that i was this weird kid that didn't have friends it's this i was trying to distance myself from those people to grow right mm -hmm. And so I'm sure both of you know, like being in that toxic environment of like not having anyone to keep you accountable is hard to grow. You know, yeah. when you're surrounded by a bunch of losers, a bunch of people that have no sense of direction with their lives, it was hard for me to be able to like separate myself and become different and put myself in that uncomfortable situation when I'm surrounded by the norm, right? Yeah, someone told me this great quote the other day. It was um, when a rocket is taking off when it starts on the ground, right? It's this huge giant contraption, right? But the piece that actually makes it into space is like, you know, 2% the size of the right. entire rocket. And the reason is because there are these big engines and thrusters on the bottom. And when you get to a certain altitude, those fall off. They run out of fuel, they're no longer helpful. And if they were stuck to it, they would just hold it down and it wouldn't be able to keep on elevating itself, keep on going up, keep on growing in a sense right. um and then all those pieces slowly start to fall off as you get higher and higher when the air is thinner when it's more difficult to climb right um and so i think that's a great metaphor for life and in some ways it's kind of sad or depressing because like those are your friends that you grew up with and you have history with them and you love them and they're like family but at the same time not everyone has the same mindset and the odds that like the way I like to look at it is like if you're training to be an NFL athlete or, you know, MLB player, right. you're not going to be practicing with your high school team and your shitty coach who does it on the side and works as like a mechanic full time. And he's just doing it for fun. Like you want to be going to camps, maybe in other cities or even in other states. So you can train with other guys who are just as ambitious, if not more yeah. so that that rubs off on you. And so you get that motivation and you get that like, wow, these are the guys I'm competing against it like pushes you up and at the same time with coaching like you know you want someone who's really done it who really knows what to tell you to do because most of the people in your life that are going to give you advice don't know what they're talking about whatsoever but they think that they, they just want to be involved so they give you advice that yeah. doesn't really make sense i remember sense. we were talking about that lunch yeah. the other day but yeah even the, the thing about the rocket like uh only like you know 10 percent of that rocket gets into space and the rest is just weighing it down mm -hmm. and it has to, you have to cut those pieces off to be able to get to space. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and I felt like I was being weighed down by so many different people, so many different, just different aspects in my life. So from my parents looking from the outside in, it looks like I'm doing great. I'm playing ball. I'm in college. I, you know, it's a, it's a learning process. It's a long process. You know, I'm going into debt. It's pretty normal. Um, but from looking from the inside out, it's like I I can't really grow with all of this weighing me down, especially mm -hmm. not anyone to keep me accountable. Like the reason that Marshall and I have been able to find success is because like we keep our circle small. Like we we really cut out what weighs down in our lives, and like you know we just keep going until like we find success. You know, so yes, yeah. I felt like I was just being weighed down a lot. Yeah. Well, what's your guys' advice then for? 
it could be someone younger. It could be someone our age. It could be someone older. What's your guys' personal advice from your experience on someone that like looks at you guys and they're like, damn, they just dropped out. Like they get to live life on their terms. They're making good money. They're on the come up. They're climbing. How do I get there? Like, you know, I, I have this desire to be there. I want to be ambitious. I want to be motivated, but they like have no idea where to start whatsoever. They don't know what to do. Their friends are losers. Kind of like you said, what's your guys personal advice? Start with you, Marshall, for getting out of that hole and getting on the right path to, you know, being the best version of yourself, whatever you want to call it. Um, I would say that, um, altering your environment is the first step to doing that. So, um, uh, lately I have been kind of assessing the, I don't know, the, the influence in my life. So like influencers, the people that I watch, the people, uh, the creatives that I watch for, um, you know, inspiration and stuff. And I don't know if you're, you guys are familiar with Virgil Abloh, but Vir- I'm, Sounds I'm, familiar. I'm heavy into yeah. like the fashion space. I have a clothing brand, you know, I've been doing fashion content for a long time. Wait, Virgil was that Abloh, the guy that died? Sorry huh? to interrupt. Was that the guy that yeah, just died? Yeah, yeah. The yes. off-white okay. guy. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So gotcha. Virgil was a big part of like the whole like Yeezy campaign. Mm-hmm. Um, a big part of you know the off-white. Literally so many, so many different things, especially regarding the fashion um, industry. But basically, um, I heard him say this one time. He was holding this tin can and it was all dented. Um, and it was a candle, um, and he he held, he was holding this tin can and he said that um, if this tin can was in an all white uh, prestigious art gallery on a shelf, it would be seen as a beautiful piece of art, you mm-hmm. know. But if it were on a shelf in an abandoned garage, it would be seen as a piece of trash. Interesting. Um, and basically, what I get from that is that a product in itself, whether that's a person, um, an item, a physical item that you are selling, a product, whatever it is, um, it's really just like, um, it, it's just a thing, right? Mm-hmm. It's not, it, there is no definition in, until it's placed in an environment, right? Mm-hmm. So we as humans, um, if we want to, you know, have, you know, some kind of like, I guess, I don't know. So if we want to, if we want to be something better than what we are now, we need to place ourselves in an environment where we are bound to grow right which is the where the whole like seeking discomfort for the purpose of evolving as, as, as a person comes into play so um i remember whenever i was growing up um, i played soccer for like 12 years so um i was homeschooled me which means that i couldn't play like at like public schools right so i had to play club level soccer which is like pretty you know intense that's like you know hot some high level shit um and then i i played with this private school in this private like christian school right and i remember um it's such as and uh, what you guys were just saying i remember i would play at this club and and like i said the the training was rigorous the competition was you know pretty intense so i would get pretty damn good like mm-hmm. throughout the training you know training with them and then in the off season i would play with the the christian school and you know i would go with this to this private school and you know not to sound arrogant but i would walk on these kids man i it was like a wider age group smaller kids um a lot less just like raw talent i guess and just dedicated like people who were like really into it so i mean i would walk all over these people and by the end of the season when i would go back to travel i would be so much worse than i was at the end of the club yeah. at the end of the club season i would be slower i would my reaction time would be worse my um self-awareness on where i was would be worse my speed was wor- i was just worse overall so Mm -hmm. um i learned from a very 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 early age that your environment um will very much determine um the trajectory of your like you know what what you're doing your skill level all that stuff so um i would say yeah like i just i think that um you know me placing you you place you the first step is just like placing yourself in an environment where you have the ability to change and evolve, which is what, you know, goes back to what Joey was saying, you know, dropping his loser friends. I had to, for me, that meant moving out of my house. That meant moving from, you know, uh, Waycross, Georgia to Brunswick, you know, and then from Brunswick to Houston, Texas, where there was a lot of other creatives. There was a lot of other creatives specifically in the fitness space who were excelling. And then from Houston to, you know LA because you know once I you know grew and grew and grew and grew in Houston I was comfortable in Houston and then once you're the biggest dog in the dog cage there I'm not saying I was the biggest and the best but yeah no I get what you're saying though yeah then you have to move you want to put yourself you want to be as soon as you start to like 
outgrow your fishbowl you want to get into a bigger one because right. then you need i yeah. completely agree and that it's hard because like it kind of goes into that like with f- it, it can be it can be so hard because you might join a friend group and like you're the littlest one and then you keep on growing and then all of a sudden you're towering over everyone else and then you're faced with the or it could be same thing with like a girl or whatever and then you're faced with like the, okay do i leave this person behind it try and get even bigger like how do i continue to get them to build with me it's a hard conversation so that kind of introduces me to the next question which it which is how as i know you've been in la yeah. for a while but how is your guys experience in the actual influencer space in la been what was what did you expect i guess we'll start with that and what's it actually like um honestly i've been i've been back and forth from la for like a year and a half now i've spent a lot of time in la even before i lived here just because i work worked with people who operate here and stuff um so i've just been kind of in this environment and uh, to be perfectly honest before i moved here i didn't ever ever enjoy the environment of la i never really enjoyed the people here the people here were the relationships were all transactional um the people here were just like um seem to have poor intentions the people there that just you know i i i'm a christian so um i just feel a lot of evil in la i feel a lot of um a lot of evil in la and i I never really enjoyed the people i was around and so whenever i guess moving here i really had you know i was not discouraged i was pretty encouraged because i knew that i was going to keep my circle small i knew that i was going to be very selective um and picky about the people i surrounded myself with um and that i let influence me on a daily you know on a daily basis um so i knew i was going to be fine but i really just had very little hope for meeting cool people here and i intended Mm -hmm. on keeping my circle small growing my um my platforms my you know i guess net worth monetarily my businesses and then you know probably dipping out going back to florida or something so so you don't you don't want to be here forever i don't know yet i don't know yet i uh because the longer i'm here the more i enjoy being here because the more i have been able to come to an understanding of like who the people here truly are Mm -hmm. um and the more experience i've gained and from my experience living here i've noticed that um most of these people are miserable to be put it simply most of these people are that's why i'm trying to get out are miserable (laughs) most of these people are miserable and they are driven by the wrong things um they don't know what fulfillment even really means they Uh think that um, a number in their bank account and a number on their instagram page is what is going to make them happy um, and I am very fortunate, was very fortunate to realize that at, an, at a very early, early age that that's just not the case. Man. Yeah. That's not what defines true happiness. It's not what defines fulfillment. Um, and I, you know, I think that I'm fine. Honestly, I'm fine living here. I'm not worried mm-hmm. about like, oh, like I need to get out of here. Like these people are terrible. I hate these people because I'm, you know, I, you know, I have good people like Joey, you know, like me and Joey are you know, we both have that mindset, you know, I've met people like you, you know, a few other people. Um, and it's been great. I've been able to, you know, I have a pretty tight circle of, they're all all pretty decent, um, people with their head on straight. We're very aware of the people around us who, you know, are, you know, miserable, who are happy. Um, I would say the only problem I've had, the only discouraging factors for me about living here has been, uh, the girls here. So, and that's, a. That's a whole. Well, okay. I, yeah. So I want to talk yeah, about that. It's like I want to hear uh, Joey's perspective first because you've yeah. been here for a while, and then we'll talk about that. Yeah, so that's a rabbit hole combo. Um, yeah. But yeah, so you I, first, I guess, did you know what you were getting into uh, because you lived in the area? You might know people who know people. Well, the, or yeah, uh, what was that like? The creative space and like social media space is so much different than just like a college space. Yeah, I'm sure you can sure. attest to that. Um, one thing that I've learned is like the people that like seem like they've got it all together online like they are so they far never from, do never do they are so far from having it all together they are looking for any possible way to find happiness they don't know what fulfillment is like marshall said and uh and i've learned that um being out here it's okay to be somewhat introverted mm-hmm. introverted in the sense that you keep your circle small this that um one quote that we've been like living by is if you want to go fast go alone but if you want to go far go together Dude, I actually just saw that like yeah. within the last week. Where do you guys remember where you misunderstood. saw that? Misunderstood. Yeah, the Mis- guy, the the brand owner of Misunderstood. Okay, interesting. Black yeah, I saw that. I videos. literally saw it just like 
probably less than a week, but uh, I like yeah, that a lot. That's yeah. cool. And uh, I've I've also learned that uh, you know, yes, like being introverted, and this kind of goes back to like if you're kind of lost, like of what to do, if your friends are losers, this that. It's okay to be introverted. It's okay to keep your head down, be on the grind, but. The greatest aspects to business, as I learned in that video you talked about, um, the greatest aspects to business is camaraderie, mm-hmm. and uh, and I've learned that you know you find success with people that are going to push you, people that are going to motivate you, and not people that are already established names and people that have already seemed like they got it all together because those people are lost, and those people I, I would argue are envious of people like us, people mm-hmm. that keep their circle small, keep people that really just be on the grind and just are happy you know yeah. i feel like that um i've met a lot of people who are a bigger name than than both of us a bit and make more money have a lot more friends but they are always coming to us for questions you know they're co- always coming to people like, like yeah. us three in here to people that just kind of keep their head down so yeah. i feel like i do i do agree with that. you i think a lot of people uh what i kind of realized so i was just in austin texas this past weekend i was checking out houses um and what I realized the second I got back here was I went to a coffee shop in Austin, Texas, got like a great cup of coffee. And the dude serving me the coffee was like genuinely wanted to have a conversation. He's like, how's your day been? And then we talked for like maybe 30 seconds, 45 seconds. And then he turned to walk away and then he turned back and he was like, oh, wait, actually, like he had to add on like another 10, 15 seconds to the conversation, which really showed me that he was actually listening as opposed to just trying to act nice to get a tip tip or because that's his job or whatever the fact that he like turned around turned back to keep the conversation going showed that he was actually interested and then i went to a coffee shop yesterday right in venice where i live and the girl that was serving me like just didn't give a fuck like i was like do you got you know could i get that croissant i was like could i get it heated up and she was like yeah it's already heated up and i was like oh perfect thanks it wasn't fucking heated up My coffee sucked and I kind of realized like she also wasn't nice at all. And I think the reason for that is because everyone here has a different priority. Like she might be working at that little small coffee shop in Venice as her temporary job, but I could almost guarantee like, like put my life on it that she wants to become a model or she wants to become an actress or she wants to become an influencer. And this is just her side job. So she's not fully putting that much effort, time, energy into it because all of her thought and all of her focus is on what she really wants to do, which is climb a ladder. Whereas the people over there, and I think a lot of other places of the country are okay just being normal, okay being average, okay like just going there day to day. They don't need to be rich, they don't need to be famous. But I think that really ties into like, my way of looking at it is the traffic here in LA. Everyone, have you guys ever noticed that when you cut people off in traffic, like you don't really get there that much faster? Yeah, I know you don't. Maybe, a but it makes you feel like you do. Yeah, it makes you feel like I need to cut this. So maybe you get like a minute on like an hour drive if you're in traffic. If you're really trying the whole time, you might get two minutes early. So you're cutting off all these people, which is making them angry, which is making them mad, which is making it worse for everybody else. And you're really not getting anything yourself. And I just realized how like the difference between like this sounds so dumb but like the traffic here versus the traffic in austin kind of plays into like what people's mindsets are here which is always trying to climb a ladder you know and it doesn't matter who you hurt or who you fuck over along the way it's just like i need to get to the top and if i'm not at least trying to get to the top then i'm a loser Mm -hmm. i feel like that's a big la mindset which can be great because it keeps you ambitious and it keeps you hungry but um like you guys said, you don't find too many genuine people, which is yeah. why it can be good to keep your circle small. Right. But I, you know, um, I think girls suffer from that a lot more than guys here because I think if you're a guy, there's a lot of things you can do. Like you can go to business, you could be an influencer, you could, you know, you could work some finance job. I think so many girls come to LA specifically to be influencers thing. or models or actresses. Right. So, you know, how has your guys' experience been with uh, some of the L.A. girls? This one's all you, bud. You were um, telling me some stories when we were when we were lifting, so let's get into that. So, I, I, I don't know if I told you this, but um, I lost my virginity very late. Yeah, like later, 19, right? Le- yeah, 19. That's I was wild. almost 20. And, um, uh, yeah, I, I was almost 20, and I... 
once I lost my virginity, I realized how easy, easy this shit is. Like as far as like hookups. Well, you have you have a lot of clout, stuff. so I'm sure that helps a lot. That's like uh, that's yeah, like there's cashier. a lot of yeah, there's a lot of different different factors and stuff that go into it. But um, I came to LA kind of expecting uh to deal with some egos, right? I came mm-hmm. dealing expecting girls to be very egotistical. Like, oh, look, I'm the shit type. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and was unpleasantly surprised to find out that most girls here who primarily live off of their um i guess sex appeal you know whether that means they do sex work only fans whatever mm-hmm. um or even you know those who just like aren't maybe they're not sex workers maybe they don't have only fans but they make their money off of like you know male validation of physical attributes yeah um I've noticed that most of them have very little self-worth, um, self-respect, self-esteem, and they like to tell themselves that they respect themselves a lot. Um, but I've dealt with a lot of girls, and, and this is partially my fault for you know not having a standard for myself, you know, for the whole time. Because you know, you move to LA, bro. You know, you move to LA. Uh, you have a little bit of clout. You want to have some fun. I mean, it's like you know? it's like a kid in a candy store. Like exactly. you can't blame the kid for exactly the the grab girl around and try some shit out. Yeah, there's a lot of hot girls here. There's a lot yeah. of easily accessible hot girls here, and you're like, fuck it, you know. Yeah. I'm just gonna like, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna do my, sh- I'm gonna just, you know. Yeah. Uh, so I did, and I I've I did that for a while, and I just very quickly realized how boring it was, and how just like after a while bro like there it, there you just start to come to the understanding that there's very little substance behind you know the the physical beauty that a lot of these girls have and that's nothing that's not an insult you know i think i i, I love i have love for everybody you know um and everybody you know i you know i've been there to a yeah. point where it's just like you know there's no depth very you know little substance but um i just i don't know for me if i like if I don't find you somewhat challenging to myself, if you don't push me to be better, if you don't push me to evolve and become, you know, stronger, better, more capable, um, if you don't challenge me in any way, then I just don't, I don't harbor much interest to you. You know, yeah. it's so unfortunate because we currently live, I forget who I was talking to some girl about this, but we live in a society right now that is rewarding these sorts of, you could say professions, right? Like I know a lot of really brilliant, young, like ambitious girls and they want to be successful. They want to make money and they're actually really smart and they could have gone and been a doctor or like, yes. I know this one girl that wanted to be a uh, attorney and she started doing only fans because like you make so much money and like, yeah, sure. Well, it's great. Like, you know, I think a lot of girls think it's like, um, impressive and empowering to make a lot of money on OnlyFans, and like i applaud them for you know making more money than 99 percent of people but i think it has created this environment where that is that is the goal for a lot of younger girls like mm. chase that you know what i mean right. like i saw some statistic that was like more people want to be uh influencers and you know only fans models um not only fans models specifically but it was more people want to be influencers than any other profession and I understand why that's happening because it seems cool and it seems like you have the life and everything. But like, like you guys were saying, it's it's not that rewarding once you're actually there, or at least for a I lot would of say, people. I don't know. It depends because like, um, there's. I, I actually had this realization last night on you know a lot of penis envy. So, um, but basically, that's I, rooms to clarify. Yeah, for the mushrooms. little kid watching, he doesn't know. Yeah. What it is. Um, so. Um, Basically, I had this realization that the lazy route, I, and I'm just going to be real, OnlyFans is lazy. If you do sure. OnlyFans, it's the easy way out. So the easy well. way out is always the least rewarding. But why would you not take the easy way out if you can make a fuck ton of money? If, you, if you're a girl and you're super attractive and, and, like, and you're thinking, like, I will make a ton of money off this, and then I'll go put it in real estate or I'll go put it in some investments. See, like, because why would you not? That's what. That's because you haven't had the realization that money does not find fulfillment or happiness, exactly. and money is the wrong gauge for 
I'm going to, I, this is going to make me happy. They think, oh, money, money's what I need to go on vacations, to do this, to do that. Um, and they confuse money making them happy with, you know, seeking purpose, finding purpose, and then being fulfilled. Doing something doing really rewarding. Purpose, doing like, something yeah. really rewarding and helping yeah. something, give, pu putting out good into the world. Um, and if you're a sex worker, let's just be real, you're adding to the problems in our world. You are I would agree. actively drawing primarily men into things that keep them isolated, from, uh, isolated, distracted, and, um, you know, a victim to, you know, their, themselves. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, it's just, it's just this giant cycle because, like, these girls wouldn't do it if they couldn't make money. And there wouldn't be any money in it if all these fucking weirdos weren't paying for it. And yep. so it's just, like, this endless cycle of, like, the thing is, like, if you're young, I mean, there isn't really an equivalent to OnlyFans for girls for guys right now, so it's hard to relate it to anything. But one of the reasons, like, unless you're gay, huh? Unless you're gay. Oh yeah, I guess. No, I mean, I've had people offer me like money for like feet pics and like, oh yeah, to wear my underwear for a week straight. That's a whole other story. <laughs> um, but <laughs> but if there was an equivalent for guys, like if guys could. If there was almost like a playbook and it said like, okay, you go to the gym for two years, you get jacked, and then some dude will pay you, you know, five hundred to a thousand dollars a day or more to post videos of yourself, so many guys would do that, yeah. you know? Yeah. So I think girls have well, I agree, it's like it sucks that this is how it works. Um, and it's an unfortunate situation. Once again, like when you have someone young who's not fully matured yet and you see this way of getting like really easy money almost like kind of like being a drug dealer for a kid in like a bad neighborhood it's very easy to choose that lifestyle to pick it's that because route. it's it actually that would be the out. equivalent actually is like in my opinion is like a kid who grew up in a bad neighborhood maybe his dad's not in the picture his mom's trying to you know provide for the kids and you know some older guy comes along and he's like bro like you know you could be part of our group i could make sure you're providing for your mom like you'll make money you'll be respected you know, like that is yeah. it's a draw to a lot of young people who aren't fully matured yet. Um, and I feel like that's kind of what a lot of girls are going through right now. And yeah, but I don't I, know if there is a solution to it, but I mean, there there is no solution. But just like to go through it, understand, damn, this shit doesn't make me happy. I was high off the money and all that stuff, all the late. stuff for like three or four months. But now it's too late. And now my self-worth sense of self-worth is in the trash now my self-respect from those around my res the respect from those around me is in the trash my um respect for myself is in the trash i literally have a price on my name i am 13.99 a month and i am yeah. seen as 13.99 a month from yeah. all of the people around me no matter it doesn't matter what you're posting you could be posting selfies on only fans but mm -hmm. regardless you know you're seen as 13.99 a month from yeah, all the people around you probably. yeah and it's so tough dude because like yeah with this new not in the same way but with this new like tiktok program that i told you about that pays really yeah. well i started posting just because i like it i want to talk about business i want to talk about life i want to talk about mistakes i've made with girls with um treating people the wrong way whatever like the lessons i've learned but now with this new TikTok program, every si I don't know about you, but every single morning I wake up, I check the dashboard. I see how much I made. Oh, yesterday is four hundred fifty-seven dollars. Oh, I only made one hundred ninety-six today. Fuck, I didn't post. I gotta post more, um, more humorous stuff. I'm I'm kind of like I'm really trying to keep my original content, which is supposed to be like helpful and like helping people grow and get motivated and all this. But at the same time, when I post like a really funny video. Or a controversial video like it's like half a million to a million uh views on tiktok like that's a thousand dollars right there you know so so the environment out here is like to sell out for money you know what yeah. i mean like to like break away from your standards or your norms to get a little bit more money in your bank account i'm not saying that's you but like that's just the environment that we're all in well that's the thing is even like someone like me like my main passion is business like that's kind of why i'm going to austin instead of here whereas here is like a more focus on social media I still find myself being that little kid in the candy store, like getting sucked into this system of uh, rewards per views. Mm -hmm, and yeah. I'm probably still, I'm talking about it right now because I understand that it's bad, but I'm still going to yeah. do it. You know, like yeah. I got to make money. I got to right. survive. 
and the way I look at it is like the more money I can make, the more impact I can have, um, you know, like that's what pays for this. And then we can share these lessons with people, but it's, it is this like endless cycle. It's just like money is the root of all evil. Yeah. You know? It's the center of every decision that it seems like that's made out here. And yeah. I, I think that like, uh, going back to like the only fans thing, I think a lot of girls out here, like, uh, at least that I've talked to that do it, like they're just, they're so pressured into doing it by people and by just people that are doing it and stuff. And it looks like appeasing and looks very enticing. And it looks kind of nice. And yeah, you get the high off the money for the first few months and then, and then your mental health just plummets. Like yeah. I've seen too many girls talk about, I, I just saw this video on TikTok the other day with this girl talking about she's done OnlyFans for like two years and she's like, I have no friends. I have really, no, yeah, I have Is she big. Yeah. You don't have to say her name, but I, I don't, understand. I don't know the name. I, yeah. But apparently she had a, quite a following on TikTok. still went out and posted it. And she was like, yeah, I have no friends. I have people, family members that hate me. I have all the money in the world, but I'm not happy one bit. She's like, I, uh, my boyfriend just broke up with me because it was getting too bad. And, uh, and I just think that's just, it's sad to see that. And you can't really see that off the rip because it's so like, uh, blinded and it's so covered by like people that already do it yeah that these girls that are just getting into it all they see is the good stuff in it and they don't see the the bad that outweighs it these people that are having these negative experiences with social media no one's gonna talk about it yeah. no nah. when do you ever see that girl like would that girl ever come on you know in front of the camera and be like yeah my life sucks like I made two million dollars this year, but my life sucks. Yeah. yeah, they don't want people to know that. It's like in Vegas. We just went to Vegas, uh, and we were talking about it. Like I grew up in Vegas, actually, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and the amount of suicides that happen um, because people lose money and stuff yeah. is absurd. But well, that's the why media they don't have balconies. You know that. Right? Yeah, I know. But the media is never going to post that. Like I've never seen anything on the news about someone like committing a suicide in Vegas is because oh, they want to hide it. You know what they I mean? They pay him off to hide it. Exactly. So they pay him off to hide it because they want Vegas to look all very enjoyable and very fun. And then people go there and lose all their money. And then they, people don't want to kill them. And they're like, I have no reason to live. So they kill themselves. Yeah. So it's that idea of like, you know, they're going to hide things that are bad because it only pushes their agenda more. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I wish people would be more honest. I've always tried to be like really honest with social media. And sometimes it's interesting because like, I do think when you're honest, it makes you more vulnerable. But if you have the right audience, it makes people respect you more. 100%. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I've, Especially like... Dude, yeah. I've experienced that very, 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 like, a lot, like, in the past, like, I don't know, just, like, the whole time I've done YouTube. Um, I've been very honest about all my experiences. I remember my first video that actually, like, did well was me talking about my experience in L.A. and talking about how I hated my experience in L.A. and how much I hated it and the struggles that I had like dealing with it um and you know now i just feel super comfortable talking about things that i struggle with you know for example um i struggle with you know girls like i you know a lot of people think i'm like this guy because i'm always like filming with girls you know i mean everybody sees him as this guy who's like oh like he's got plenty of girls like you know what i mean he's probably happy as fuck like you know fucking hella bitches yeah. you know what i mean but like i'm dude i'm only as fuck last night um I, uh, whenever I was, you know, I was out of it, I, I was, uh, I wrote this die, I drew out this diagram, and I don't remember drawing out this diagram, I don't, I just remember I was done, and I looked at it, and I'm like, holy shit, this is crazy, um, I was drawing these circles, and I drew a small circle, and I drew a big circle, and I drew, I wrote more in the small circle, and I wrote less in the big circle, and a greater than symbol, and then I wrote this other small circle, and I, I, I had, um, and I wrote times three in the circle. And, I was, and afterwards, I'm like, what does that mean? Like, what what, what does times three mean? Um, and then I started looking at everything else I had, and I was thinking, okay, so as a good man, what are the three people that a good man needs in his life? Um, and the first is like, okay, I need God. You know, I need my heavenly father i'm a you know i'm a christian i need god god is like you know he like you know i don't really know how to really explain yeah that it's a very further. important it's you, just like it's very important to me it's what i need um and then i need my best friends 
So like this can be one person, this can be three people, this can be five people, this can be mm -hmm. 10 people, just my people that I would actually call my friends, people that would actually, you know, get up off their ass to come help me if I needed help, who would stand up for me, would speak up for me, who would um, speak, speak, stand up for me behind, like without me being there if somebody was talking shit, those people, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then the, the third person, I was like, okay, well, what is, who is a third person? You it's know what I mean? And it's like, I, I came to realization it's your intimate partner. Yeah. So like you're a girl, you know, I, you know, in the Bible, God created Adam and then he said, this isn't good. Like this isn't good for man to be alone. So he created Eve because without Eve, Adam is alone and being alone is not good for, for man. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, cause community is like s just so important for every individual person real community no though not like social media community not like all like snapchat community not like my group chat but like real community like yeah. the people who you speak face to face like i'm looking you in the eye speaking to you because i genuinely care about what you're saying and you care about what i'm saying mm -hmm. um and i just you know i thought about that i'm like damn like i'm actually the reason i feel so alone like i was writing all types of shit about being alone while i was tripping um and you know just community like isolation like just paralleling all of that stuff and comparing it to good and evil and bad and good um and i was just like damn like even though there's so many girls you know that i have like dealt with or whatever i have been alone for a long time you know i felt alone for a long time and i felt a need for like you know i need that like intimate companionship i need that you know your your partner your girl you yeah. know what i mean a, a girlfriend wife whatever you want to call it so i've just you know i guess kind of come to the realization that like <sighs> bro i need a girlfriend man okay so this is interesting this is what i need to bring up okay so i this is a question i ask myself all the time and i want your guys answer or your guys input on this um i'm constantly having a battle with myself of you know what? I'll put girls aside. Like, there's girls, like, I could date right now that are interested, and then sometimes, like, I don't feel like they're enough. But, like, part of my mind is, like, I'll put girls aside for five years. I'll just make as much money as I can. I'll make my business as big and successful as possible. I'll get my social media as big and successful as possible. And then once I'm, like, 27 and I have everything like figured out then I will really start dating seriously that sounds like one side one perspective but then I also hear like a lot of really successful like um, entrepreneurs and public speakers say no like you need to find someone when you're poor you need to find someone when you're not big that can grow with you but they need to have a very similar mindset, mindset in order to do that so what's your guys do you guys want like some girl that you can build with or do you want to like make it big yourself and then later in life like maybe get like a homebody wife or something like well, that I'm very, I'm very neutral on this because i actually do have a girlfriend that, and i've been dating her for almost five years now holy shit yeah That's so crazy. my um, longest is five months and she's like <laughs> she's gonna be my wife so it's like oh no way yeah awesome. but we're doing long distance and we've been doing long distance for like two years now mm -hmm. it's been on and off i see her occasionally like i see her like once a month so she lives in vegas and i'm very neutral on that because it what that allows me to do is it allows me to keep my head down and still grind out here and still focus on my business and my my name and stuff like that and the content that I need to create. But um, and she's able to focus on her side of the things. She's an esthetician. She's working on her own stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, uh, it is nice to still have that companionship and that, you know, you know it's there that community. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's like my my third. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah. my that's my person. And I can still like every night be able to go and talk to her talk to her about her day talk about our goals talk about uh stuff that we did better today stuff you know she's in the gym as well i'm in the gym uh so it is helpful to have someone like uh with the same mindset like someone that is yeah. is keeping their head down and grinding and that's a mindset that i would say i established first and it rubbed off on her like very well and really? now we work together like very seamlessly mm -hmm. but I am in a very blessed situation where I'm able to do that and still focus on my my grind because I'm I haven't experienced the the mindset that I'm in right now and living in the same state with her yet. Yeah. So I don't know how it would be and how it would affect me if she was here and around me all the time. If it would, I uh, if it would get me more lazy or get me more to be more complacent. So I'm not sure exactly how to feel on that. But from my experience, like 
having someone at least with the same mindset and someone who's working towards their goals is like a necessity for like yeah. an entrepreneur and someone who wants to be different and better because even as simple as someone who doesn't go to the gym mm -hmm. like i've seen too many friends of mine who go to the gym they get a girl and the girl almost like grills them for going to the gym yeah you They're can't like, have oh, you gotta have you gotta have someone that supports you you gotta have yeah someone that so won't make you feel bad about going after your dreams right. or trying to better yourself whatever yes and um, she understands some nights nice. i won't even be able to facetime some nights i won't even be able to talk some days i won't even be able to talk because i'm just on my grind you know that's what I mean? great dude that sounds like a good um it's a healthy relationship that's a, yeah that's a great balance yeah. i had a a weekend girlfriend i call it back in <laughs> high school she was at a different school like an hour away really sweetheart of a girl um and i would get to hang out with my friends all week long and then i would either go see her or she would come see me and we'd like just be like absolutely devoted to each other for the weekend and then we'd go back and like get our work done and stuff it's actually great yeah. i haven't thought about that in a long time but that could be actually like a great uh thing to have when you're young i think when someone's around each other all the time, you know, and you can't be separated, um, you got to pick that or your friends or your work life. It's hard to have all three. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think there's, um, I think you have two choices basically. As a driven person with goals, ambitions, and the realization that um, of everything you just spoke on, you have two choices. Your first choice is to do kind of what you said, just put girls aside. Um, make money then when you're older you're rich then you can look for girls or whatever um there's that or you can you know do the hard the harder one and this is this is a lot, a lot harder in my opinion and you can pick the harder choice and really just take time and look i guess for girls that and, and you could you kind of have to experiment with this because there's yeah. been girls that I have um, I've dealt with that like I've I've hung around them for a while you know we'll hang out we'll you know spend time together oh my gosh <laughs> that liquid death hitting you <laughs> <laughs> and uh and and they make me lazy man they yeah, make me yeah. lazy they're just dragging me down they make me feel lethargic I hate that shit and then I've been with girls that have really really pushed me and encouraged me in my work and they are inspired by the fact that like i'm you know i'm so driven and i and i and i work so much and i work hard for what i want and they they encourage me to do that and they themselves do that and that i've found is where where like i find i i can have that because like mm -hmm. for me like if you weigh me down yeah i don't i'm not gonna find you interesting yeah, i'm not, not even gonna, i'm not even gonna want to sleep with you to be yeah. honest um but if you encourage me, if you push me, if you challenge me and you are busting your ass like I'm busting my ass, but you understand that like and, and, and you understand that like I need like, you know, I, I need some space just as you need some space to get your work done. I need some mm -hmm. space to get my work done. Um, that can be healthy. That can be a healthy relationship dynamic, very similar to kind of, you know, like what Joey was saying with his relationship. Yeah, he has, great. he has time that he can like, you know, spend doing his own stuff. Um, and she has time to spending the time that she can spend on doing her own stuff. And I actually heard this, this, uh, you know who Jay Shetty is? I don't think so. Sounds familiar. He's a middle Eastern guy, big, huge on Instagram, has this big podcast, talks about love, talks about relationships a lot. Um, but basically he said that if you're always together in a relationship, you have no time apart to grow as individuals so that you can grow as a couple and help the help each other grow. So mm -hmm. basically, uh, that's basically what he was saying. He was saying if you're always together and you don't take time apart, you are not going to have any time to grow as an individual so that you can bring the other person up and they can bring you up. Otherwise, mm -hmm. because if you're always together, you're both going to be, you know, lazy. You're, I mean, you know how it, I'm yeah, sure it goes into the same thing it. as like trying to find a friend group that's uh, that has strengths and areas that you have weaknesses, yep. right? That yep. you grow. Um, that is one thing I noticed about the people I went to college with. I think that just applies to everything in life. Like the, some of the guys that I went to college with would never separate from each other. Like they would always yeah. be together, like no matter what. Like, like some kids that were in other dorms would come and sleep in our dorm because they couldn't separate from their friends or whatever. And a, a man just in general needs alone time to grow. He needs yeah. alone time to be able to separate himself from people and like, you know, be able to fail, be able to learn and get up on his, you know, feet himself. So, yeah. and that applies to relationship, friendships, like business partners, whatever it is. Like, I think that that just applies to literally everyone 
and everything. So. If you're trying to grow, I think yes. there's nothing wrong with like being simple and you know like. So you know, my you know I've talked to my parents about this, like um, my mom and my stepdad. I'm like, why don't you guys start your own business? Why don't you guys you know do this, do that? And they're just like, dude, we kind of just like don't care. Don't they? They don't. They don't care. They, they just don't. moved to Montana. They just got a house in Montana, population like eight thousand, some little town. And uh, I was like, do you guys ever get bored? It sounds horrible. And they're like, no. They just like go and go to the bookstore every day, get a book and get a coffee that's and sit uh, outside and read. And that's totally fine, honestly. Like yeah. if you want to have mm-hmm. that life, like great for you. Honestly, you'll probably have a more peaceful life than someone like us trying to like for climb sure. this ladder. But you just have to figure out what you want. And then when you do figure out what you want, you have to go about like finding uh, the path and the way to do it. But that See, being said, like. my Hold on. My, I want to say something about that. My, my dad, like. I just had a phone conversation with him the other day. He's like the same. Like he, he's always said this uh, this saying to me. He's like, "Nice, easy life," mm-hmm. and I understand that to some degree. And when I talked to him on the phone, and he repeated that to me the other day, I understand having a nice, easy life. I have friends that really just want to settle down, like get married, and uh, and have like a nine to five, and that's fine. I you really can't like talk shit on those people. Yeah, you know they're happy. They're this or that. But, um, you know, talking to my dad, like, you know, nice, easy life can mean like two different bad things. Like, uh, cause I, I, th- I take that as two different ways. Number one, um, nice, easy life is, you know, being simple, like kind of just going about the normal route, being like going about it easy, this, that. But, um, the other thing, which is a, is a good part of it is like learning to appreciate like the simple things. Yeah. And that's one thing that I've learned that, um, when you are just kind of like, uh, like for me, li- like lately, I, I just started like c- uh, bettering my diet and eating a lot less and eating uh, just more clean foods. Yeah. And foods taste so much better to me now. Mm-hmm. And it's like when you simplify your life and, uh, you know, you enjoy certain simple things more. Yeah. So that's the good part of that. But at the same time, I'm not going to live th- this nice, easy, simple life that's going to be just like everyone else. You know what I mean? For sure. So. so well, how does that so. play into... We're, I think we're running a little low on time here, so we'll finish it off with, okay. like, what's the next step for you guys both? Um, both, I, I guess, in a sense of, like, because we're trying to relate this to business and, like, self-growth and stuff, what's your guys' personal next steps? What's your guys' next steps together? Because you guys work together all the time in terms of, like, what are you hoping to get out of life, L.A. specifically, in the next, like, five years, I'll say? <clears throat> I guess I'll go first. Um so personally i've been doing content creation for a while now it's my passion i love doing it um it's done well for me um so i can i plan on continuing to do that for as long as i can just because the fulfillment that i get from creating content um and bringing people joy bringing people smiles bringing people laughter bringing people encouragement inspiration to be better to do better for themselves to be you know um you know to love themselves more to be more i guess just outgoing and stuff that is unmatched man the fulfillment that i get from that is just like i can't really compare it to much of anything i can't really compare it to the f- fulfillment i get from getting a check in my bank account yeah. or you know uh seeing my balance go up so if you um, didn't get money from content creation you still do it yeah 100 percent. i mean That's i great. don't to, if i'm being completely honest i make very little money from consecration i don't mm-hmm. monetize my youtube um i just recently you put me onto the tiktok things i just recently monetized that i don't i hate doing ads for my social media you've probably seen i don't ever promote anything hardly yeah. except for my own clothing brand um so i was like okay well i need to make money how am i gonna make money how am i gonna get rich because i need to get rich you know yeah. um so i was like okay so what do i love what do I love? I love creating content. I can make money from that eventually, but I love creating in other ways too. So like, for example, like I've been doing fashion shit on TikTok for a long time. I love clothes. I love, um, uh, putting together outfits. I love, uh, learning about the whole thing. I love designing. I love all that shit. Right. So starting a business is fun, dude. I'm, you're going through that oh, right yeah. now. You're going through the, yeah. you guys are both going through the like very oh, first yeah. steps. I was there like six months ago. It's, challenging and it's confusing but it's hella fun dude, some hype, i love dude. this shit man i so love nice. it bro um and i dude i've I, i've um i've done two drops now so mm-hmm. um and uh i mean by the way i need to get one of those 
the shirts. Tough. Yeah, you got, yeah, you yeah. Got sold out. I'll put you. No, I'll put you in an order. I'll put okay. you in an order before we put in a bulk order. But I gotta get you your shorts too. Um, uh, that'd be awesome. Honestly, yeah, I'm very pleased with how we did. Um, we did like almost 80k in the first two months with no nice. ads organically, which for me, you know, doing it all by myself and with you know with just the help of like my two homies, Joey and my boy Caleb, like. I don't know. I think that's pretty fucking that's sick. Great. That's um, great. And for me, like, I, I was like, you know, I was like, damn, after after doing it, I was like, damn, like, I can really do this. Like, now that I can, you know, I truly understand how to market. Um, I truly understand. Or, or not, I, I, I say I truly understand. I'm learning um, how to create um, a brand, how to, how to create brand identity, how to market, how to find target audience, how to create something good, how, you know, to, I learn, I know about, you know, the different things like, um, relevance of products, different things like that. I'm learning about all that stuff. I'm, you know, now I'm networking I'm you know, connecting with a lot of other, you know, brand owners, stuff like that. Um, I have a lot of hope and encouragement about it and I'm very motivated to kind of keep doing that. Um, I also just have like a very, a very in, like an insane level of confidence in the authenticity and individuality of my brand um, just because I know it's just so untapped like what I want to do specifically I have such a very clear vision um, and it's not like you know for a while I waited to do a clothing brand bro you know I've been doing like clothing shit for hella mm -hmm. long and I just recently did it and the reason I waited was because I knew that I didn't want to start something until I had some until I had some gold until yeah. I had like something completely unique and authentic to myself and only myself and something that wasn't a rip off of another brand um, something that wasn't just like oh I'm just gonna like do this and it's heavily inspired by this but I just need to start a brand so I'm gonna do it um, I just wanted to be patient and wait till I had something that was truly unique and authentic to myself and I in a matter of a week man I found it and I was like holy shit I'm going to be fucking rich. And <laughs> that, <laughs> yeah. that, then I started, uh, started two months ago and, uh, you know, well on our way to first hundred K in the first like three months, I, yeah, I think we'll hit great. that. So I'm dude, I'm, that's, that's where it's I'm excited. That's, that's what I'm going to do. That's exciting. my, uh, and it's also so fucking awesome because like the, the clothing brand itself, it's not, a, it's not just a brand, right? So it's a, it, it like, in order to build a, a clothing brand that that really you know goes a long way, you have to build a community within that clothing brand, within the brand identity, and building that community, I can do what I do with my content, which is you know to encourage people, you know, um, to embrace individualism, to um, to to do stuff like that, and it's just super super awesome to be able to have that opportunity to do that, but also make money doing it, which yeah. is why it's so fulfilling, which is why I love it so mm -hmm. much, and it's it that's my baby, like that shit I care about it, I love it, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Just the same as I love my YouTube channel, um, I love it to death, and it's just because I can truly have a positive impact on people while making money, and there's not not a better feeling than that. So oh yeah, I bet. that's my plan. 100%. That's my plan. That's yeah. dope. What I've what learned. About you, Joy? Uh, is being able to monetize things that are impactful and like influential or is so powerful like working with Marshall like with the clothing stuff and the YouTube like the impact that we've seen from individuals of just people coming up to us in public and like uh, just complimenting the videos or the, the edits or whatever it is like that that is such a cool fulfilling feeling so for me personally um, you know seeing all the all the impact we can have by building a, a brand a business by building a, a a presence on social media uh that is that is something that i that's the route that i want to go down where i want to eventually be able to have an impact on people whether that's through my name and my belief system um whether that's through pursuing a, a like a, a christian belief system in you know pursuing and pushing the gospel or whether that is um basically just uh, showing my visual presence on social media and uh, having an impact on people by being able to see like my work and stuff like that. That's, that's something that is truly impactful and just meaningful um, in general. So yeah, that's the route that I really want to go down. Um, just keep pursuing content, keep pursuing the, the brand with Marsh and stuff. Um, it's been a lot of fun and uh, I, I don't plan stopping soon. So sweet. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think you guys have, uh, I think you guys have figured it out and well, I guess no one's figured it out, but you guys yeah, have figured out like what it takes to get there. So, and you guys are on your path and just like me, like I'm just starting to, so I think that's fucking great. Um, but yeah, is there anything else you guys want to add? I think, uh, I think bro, we need to hear you. We need huh? to hear what, what's your plan, bro? What are you going to do? Uh, well, yeah. Well, you ask us a lot of questions. Right, well, yeah, now we're going to ask point. you I, I've questions. been trying to get better at listening recently because I talk a lot and you don't really learn much if you're talking, but, um, 
yeah, finally, my plan with Squid Hoss, my personal, I have a couple of different things. That's why I'm going to Austin to work on a new one. But with Squid Hoss specifically, which is what most people are familiar with, my goal the whole time has been like leverage my social media to build it and then completely remove myself from the brand in terms of an identity sense. I obviously still want to work on it because I love it. I love fitness. I love business. I love growing it. I want to play a huge role, you know, years and years from now. But I don't want the company to be known as like my brand. Oh, you're wearing squid stuff. You're wearing squid packed or stuff. Yeah. I want people to buy squid Hoss because it's like, you know, the new Lululemon, but Lululemon's fucking dumb and tacky. Yeah. And I, I think all the brands out there are tacky as fuck. So for a lot of the fitness brands. Gosh. So I wanted to create a brand, leverage myself, obviously, you know, because it's there, the views are there. So like leverage that to get the sales and an audience at the start. But it's finally starting to get to the point where it's growing organically without me. I have all these other fitness influencers on it. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen there's like all these big fitness influencers that have contracts yeah. with these big companies that like DM me and they're like, yo, let me get some of your stuff. Uh, Not but just they fitness. don't. Uh, like I, I saw you connected with Miles. Miles Jones? Miles Baguette. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. Dude, fashion I guys. A lot of people Miles, hit it. Bro. I sent out hundreds and hundreds, thousands of free shit to people just trying to spread the name. That's and awesome. people really like it now, which is great. Um, but yeah, so it's working. I'm very happy about that. I'm excited for what's next. Um, and I'm still just like trying to jump in the deep end every day because like you figure out how to swim or you drown. And that's the most fun as opposed to just going in slowly. Uh, but yeah, that's where I am. It's going well. Um, didn't have to get a job right out of college, so obviously very That's happy about that. Finally Always. making money off TikTok, but yeah. Um, appreciate you guys asking. Yeah. I think that's a great way to wrap it up. Thank you guys, as always, uh, for joining us on Squid Talk. We always try and mix it up, get like business people and fashion people and influencers in. We're always trying to get someone new who's young, ambitious, and killing it in life. That way we can involve all these different perspectives um, in this journey that we call I guess squid hoss with life. Um, but uh, if you guys have any questions, as always, put them in the comments. I'll try and read through all those and like incorporate those kind of questions into the next one. Leave a like, subscribe if you enjoyed. And so you can be updated for when the next one drops because we're going to be doing this a lot more often now that we've got things set up. But thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for coming. Oh, thanks for, thanks having, for having us. Us. And uh, we'll catch you guys soon.